This is Liz Lorente with Fox News Latino, and with me here today is Michael McCabe, the filmmaker. And uh, Michael, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you were recently with a crew uh, that was working on a ship uh, near Honduras, and uh, and what were they doing there? And you were there working on a film project with this, the yeah. crew of this company. Uh, yeah, exactly. What happened? Well, they were just arriving into the country uh, on a project. They're going to be not working off coast, but they're going to be working on the interior rivers, uh, removing logs and clearing uh, the river for navigation. Right. So this is a project that was, uh, has been in, in preparation now for quite some time, but this was the first time down with the boat. And these, were, these are U.S. citizens yes. and working for a company based in Florida? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is the, the whole company basically, basically is there. It's the captain and five crew members that are there now. So, but yeah, they, uh, they arrived uh, a month ago on the 5th of May into the country and were attempting to clear customs and immigration when they were, when they were stopped. Right, okay. Now they were stopped, why? What was the official reason? Well, the, in the area there's a Caratasca Lagoon and I mean, you have to look on the map, but the town of Puerto Limpira is inside the lagoon about four miles from the coast. And there's a small inlet. And in the inlet is the Navy base that mm. I guess they didn't know about at the time. But when they passed it, the Navy stopped them. And I believe it's Navy protocol there to stop every boat, even a canoe, and just to check them out and see what they're doing. So that's when they were stopped initially. The Navy did, though, let them go to proceed to meet with the port captain. At that point, they, everything seemed fine. Now, they did have an arrangement and they had permission to be there, right? Yeah, the uh, captain was there in February to meet with the townspeople and to make all the arrangements with the government for coming in to do the research and, uh, I'm sorry, to do the recovery work. Okay. And uh, so they had uh, a contract with the mayor of the town of Awas, which is it's only about 20 uh, miles from uh, Puerto Limpira. So they were there, had everything set up, but this was the trip to now start the project, to start the works project. What were some of the concerns? I understand there were some concerns on the part of the crew about perhaps about crime, being the victims of crime. Can you explain what those concerns were? Well, the concern in any kind of marine work is not so much in country. They weren't too concerned about working inside of Honduras. They actually had a security team from the town that was going to help them keep the boat safe. I mean, it's, it's an obvious boat. They, know, they never get American boats in that region, so they had planned for security. Their concern was traveling from Florida through the Caribbean to Honduras. This was the biggest concern they had, and, and mm -hmm. the area uh, has a lot of narcotics trade, and uh, there's piracy. You know, the captain has dealt with piracy in the Caribbean before. You know, oh, so, yeah. so, so piracy narco traffickers and so what did they do to prepare for this did they did they have something to protect themselves well they had weapons on the boat and this is this has become the issue uh, they had weapons on the boat for protection in uh, in the open water um, and they had arrangements with the port captain in Puerto Limpira to meet with them right away he told them he was bringing weapons everything seemed fine they and everything fine. was okay yeah. everything was approved yeah everything I mean everything was cleared in advance he he made it clear what he was going to do and that he was going to bring uh, some weapons with the boat you know with the boat right uh, just for protection in the water okay but, so um, now something went terribly wrong so then they might, were arrested yeah and the reasons were why well I believe it was weapons charges weapons you know, the, charges the police officer uh, just felt that he needed to arrest them. I'm not the, quite sure why. Yeah, that the they Navy, were illegal? That the weapons they, were illegally brought Well, I mean, the, the concept he was presenting is that you're not allowed to have weapons in okay. Honduras. All right. So country. now they have been in jail, and you barely missed being well, with yeah. them, right? I mean, if it was the first night when the police officer wanted us to go, then I, I fear I would have been with them. Right, uh, okay. So they're but, in jail, yeah. and they've been in jail since May 5th. Yeah. Well, on the 5th they went in and um, it's been a slow and steady. The 5th they, they slept at the police compound. Mm -hmm. The night of the 6th, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, the night of the 6th they were arrested and taken into the prison eventually. Right. And then um, 
There's been a series of court hearings all What's throughout the whole process. What's being done about this? What is, has the U.S. government done? Is the U.S. government doing anything to intercede? Well, I'm not sure to what extent. I know what you know what people are saying, but you know I'm not I'm not there. I know that the embassy in Tegucigalpa is a, the American embassy is aware. They sent in a, a little team of people to meet with them in the prison and check the conditions. Uh, I know that there's several congressmen that are involved. How do you feel about this? I mean, you know these people. You were there. Um, how, how does this strike you? What are your thoughts well, about this? Yeah, I mean, personally, I think it's a shame. I think that there are people that do uh, bad things in the world or, do, or try to do harm. And, and, uh, and I know these men for about a year now. And they have nothing but the best intentions. They were excited to try to help the people. The town of Awas was excited. It might bring some, you know, some economic help to the region, and uh, I just feel like I don't know why it's being made a big deal. I understand that weapons are a big deal, you know, and I understand that the region has a lot of narcotics trade and issues, but um, but the steps were taken according to what the local authorities told the captain he needed to do. So he followed followed what he was told to do. And uh, I believe the interception by the police basically threw out all the, uh, the conditions they had. You went to visit them yeah. after they were already in jail. Mm -hmm. How were they doing and under what conditions are they well, being held? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't spoken to any of them for about seven days. I was told to stay on the boat by myself while they were taken away. And I talked to other people who said that they were doing fine. But I was concerned just because... I mean, nobody wants to hear you're going to a Honduran so prison. So you go there. Yeah. Is it isolated? What is it like? What the, was the it prison, like when you got there? It's a strange prison. It's small. There's maybe 100 men there and f four or five women. What are the conditions? Uh, the conditions are, I mean, it's the town itself is struggling economically, so the prison doesn't get it any better than the town. But um, the worst part, in my opinion, about the prison are the nights, because at night they're locked in around 5.30 p.m., and uh, they're not let back out until the next day. And there's no bathrooms in the cell. If, and they were all said if they have to use the bathroom, they just have is to use clean? the bathroom. Is it clean? Is it filthy? No, is it's it... not. Uh, I mean, it's all relative. But uh, it's, it's not very clean. The food is very uh, questionable. The water source is a well that's in the How middle of the town. How are they being treated, did they say? The treatment is uh, it's a strange scenario. The, there appears to be one man who's an inmate that more or less runs the prison from inside. And he seems like, you know, he is respecting the Americans. I mean, this is always a big question to me is, do people like you because you're American or dislike you because you're American? It has a big effect on how you're treated. Right. But um, they appear to be treated well. The problem is in the prison, there's infighting amongst other inmates. Right. And uh, I heard that on uh, about four days ago, the guards were shooting into the prison to break up a fight. And, you know, stray bullets and ricochets can happen, you know. so. I'm more concerned about something happening to them indirectly than directly. What are your expectations? How hopeful are you? Well, I'm hopeful. I tend to be a, a hopeful person. I, I'm an optimist, but um, they've been continuously let down throughout the process. It's always been tomorrow. Everybody, they've been told at least twice definitively they're getting out tomorrow, and then tomorrow comes and goes. Uh, I think they're starting to lose hope a little bit in the process. And that was, uh, we were all trying to encourage them just, there's a process happening, there's an appeals, let's let the process happen and see what happens. But it just is always tomorrow. It's always tomorrow something's happening or someone's talking. So I want to believe they'll, they'll get out because that's just what I want to believe. But I, I'm not convinced, and I know that the men are starting to lose hope a little bit. All right. Well, Michael, you're certainly doing your part to try to heighten awareness about their plight. And yeah. uh, you got lucky. You're not there with uh, them right now. Yeah. So, And you're doing what you do. You're telling their story. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for being with us today. And please keep us informed about sure. any developments. This is Liz Lorente with Fox News Latino.